We're going to talk some football. I'm not going to talk philosophy, uh, maybe tiny, tiny, tiny bit of it, but I want to get into some football. i got a lot of video, um, and, uh, you know, just want to, really want to give back to you guys, okay? Uh, it, it's an honor to come out to, to Las Vegas and, and, again, get a, you know, a different group of coaches. I talked to a group up here from California. I mean, coaches all over the country. And, again, I enjoy – last year I was up in Portland, Oregon. You know, never spoke up there and had a time. Uh, again, I just enjoy talking ball, okay? I don't want to talk philosophy. I don't talk about that stuff. I'll give you a little bit, but I want to get into ball as quick as we can and give back. Um, you know, these guys up here, I apologize your name. Names, what do we got? Uh, Vinny and Adrian. Vinny and Adrian up here. You know, they bought one of my videos a long time ago, and they're asking, like, real detailed questions, okay? And, again, we can get as detailed as we want to. Again, uh, again I'm going to talk our 4-3 defense. I'm going to talk, um, you know, really some of the basics, what makes us good. I've uh, been doing it for, shoot, since 19, I don't know, since 1989. I've uh, been fortunate enough to be able to move around and run the same defense and not have to change it. And I think, you know, the big thing is, is whatever you're doing, okay, it's not about the defense. It's about what you know about how you, how you can fix your defense during a game, okay? Again, for, you know, everybody feels like they got to switch it. Well, we've been doing it for so long, we're going to have to switch it up because people know. Okay, I, I truly don't believe in that. So we change our defense up because we have to, because everybody else changes up. What's that do? Now you're, you, you become an amateur at what you do. So I've been doing this for so many years. We know the ins and outs of it, and you just continue to get better every year and fix the little things, and we'll talk about that as we go through. Um, you know, just to give you a little breakdown again, just kind of where I've been, what I did, you know, again, played at the University of Rhode Island, played really for one year for my dad at Youngstown State, just so you can kind of, you know, figure, you know, what happened. Uh, played at the University of Rhode Island, met my wife there, got married, got lucky, and then uh, took her to, the uh, to Miami University, was a GA at Miami, Ohio. One year on, on defense, next year on offense was Sherman Smith. You guys probably remember Sherman Tank Smith, played for the Seahawks, all pro. Um, then got hired, got lucky, got a receiving coaching job after two years of GA. Uh, if I hadn't got that job, I was going with Jerry DiNardo. I already, already had a GA job at Vanderbilt set up. Um, ended up leaving Miami of Ohio to go back to my own model at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, big, big pay raise, uh, leaving Miami of Ohio back in the day, making 18000 okay? And again, just built my way up. And I, I truly believe, and you know, i got some young guys on my staff that are making really good money but haven't gone through the grind. And they don't understand how to get there. And they're like, you know, man, I've been a linebacker coach for, you know, for you coach now for five seasons at Pitt. Like, I can't get that D.C. job. Well, you know, it's hard to be a, you know, you're in a Power Five conference. You're in the ACC, and you, and you want to move up to do those things. It's hard. It ain't easy. But you know, I cut my teeth coaching the D line, then moved to linebackers, then got the coordinator job. Moved out to Northern Illinois. Spent three years there with Joe Novak. Really took a step back from being a D coordinator at the FCS to be a linebacker coach again at Northern Illinois. My wife looked at me and said, "What's wrong with you? We're going to go all the way." She's from Rhode Island. We're going to go all the way out to Illinois. Like you got to be nuts. And I was like, "Honey, I think I am nuts." So. We took off there. She trusted me. We left after three years to go to Miami of Ohio, back to Miami of Ohio, um, you know, where we were you know, married and, and first uh, got our job there and became the defense coordinator in 2003 with Ben Roethlisberger. And again, I like to tell you kind of just kind of those stories because I may refer to that as we go later on. But went 13 to 1 that year, spent eight, one, eight months. Wife bought a house, sold a house in eight months. Uh, not, not a good deal. And then went to the University of Cincinnati for three years as a defense coordinator. Mark D'Antonio hired me there, spent three years there, had good success, left there to go to Michigan State for eight years, had great success there. Uh, met a couple of coaches from Pasadena on the, on the um, elevator today. I was like, I love Pasadena. We beat Stanford out in the Rose Bowl in 2013. Uh, so, I, you know, Pasadena is one of my favorite spots. And then... Um, and then had the opportunity to go to Pittsburgh and, and get the head job there. And, and you know, fantastic. You know, I waited. OK. And again, um, you know, what's that Zoltar? What's that little machine? You stick your, a dollar, dollar, dollar bill in there. OK. And then they, they give you a kind of a, you know, kind of a, a I guess a, a, your schooling as far as what you should do. Well, one of the things he said today, I, my wife looked at that and said, look at that thing. Let's go put a dollar in there. And it said patience. OK. And again, I think through the whole process had patience. I could have made some moves. Again, I say, I give you these stories, you know, just, you know, for your own careers, you know, young coaches thinking, like, where do I want to go, what do I want to do, but patience, you know. I don't know how many jobs I turned down. I can't even count how many I turned down. Um, the, matter of fact, the last time I was out in Vegas was five years ago and interviewed for the Colorado State job out here uh, when they played Colorado State, I played somebody in a bowl game out here, met the president, and turned the job down because I was patient. I just didn't want to be a head coach anywhere. I want to be a head coach at the right spot. 
and I got the right spot at the University of Pittsburgh and, and uh, excited to be there. So that's kind of my story. Let's, let's move on and talk some ball here. You can see the spring schedule there. Again, it's wide open. You guys give us a call, you know, give our secretaries a call, whatever it may be. You know, email us. Hey, coach, I'm coming out. We've had people come from California, Mexico. They come from all over the place, New Hampshire, uh, again, wherever I've been. So, you know, we, we'd love to have coaches out there. We'll stick you in a film room, talk ball. The food in Pittsburgh is outstanding and it's not as expensive as that pizza I ate for lunch today, okay? Um, so there's our spring calendar, so you got it. Um, again, we got some camps that go on. Again, I'm not going to you know, talk a bunch about that. Uh, again, just our schedule there. Again, I, I, I like our schedule. It's one of the easier ones we've had uh, in the last couple of years. We've had some brutal schedules. Uh, matter of fact, I think we're, we had the eighth hardest schedule a year ago. Um, but you guys could look at that somewhere else. Uh, our coaching staff, I think we got an outstanding staff. You know, Mark Whipple, offense coordinator, Randy Bates, who uh, not only, you know, was a defense coordinator of our top 10 defense um, this year, you know, just about all, all phases, um, but also, the, you know, we, we led the country in sacks this year. In freaking Pittsburgh, it was like, what? I mean, Ohio State was number two. They couldn't freaking beat our. Okay, they're about two hours away. Couldn't get us with that big joker they got at defensive end. But two great coordinators. Dave borbley has been all over the country, O-line coach. Archie Collins was my, one of my former GAs at Michigan State. Uh, Andre Powell coached with him at the University of Rhode Island a long time ago, running back special teams coordinator. Rob Harley, linebacker coach, again, another one of my GAs. Tim Salem, um, again, our tight ends coach, been all over the place as well, was at Ohio State for a while. Charlie Partridge, old FAU head coach, my defense coordinator, assistant head coach, outstanding. Chris Beatty, receiver coach, and then Corey Sanders, again, our safeties coach, again, do an excellent job. Again, you guys are welcome to come out, uh, email those guys if you have questions. I'm going to hit you just on our program goals real quickly. You know, first one is, is you know, it's all about relationships. And, I, and again, I, the reason I kind of hit you with these things is because I think it's important in your own programs to kind of have, you know, a, you know, a place to start as far as what are you doing with your players, okay? And I always talk about relationships. You know, I was fortunate enough to win the Broyles Award back in whatever year it was, okay? And, you know, and it sits in my office, and I talk to recruits all the time about it. It's not a, that trophy is not because I'm a good coach. It has nothing to do with the damn X and O's we're going to talk today. But I got that award because I knew how to treat people, okay? I was honest with them. They trusted me. I trusted them. There was a love between the, the coaches and the players, Matter of fact, when I got to Northern Illinois, they had one of the longest losing streaks in the country. They hadn't had a winning season for I don't know how many years. I got lucky there. But when I got there, they talked about it was the players, you know, they, like, you know just listen to the coaches in the staff meeting, like, you know, we got a problem. It's like the players are, you know, think it's, you know, players against coaches, coaches against the players. And if you got that type of culture, you got problems. But to me, it's all about the kids and the coaches. And we try to get around them, love them up. You know, I got, you know, Players, I got one of our shoot tackles that should have declared for the NFL draft call me this morning. Why don't you call your damn D-line coach? I'm on a plane. He's, he's calling me. I'm getting ready to take off to come to Las Vegas. And, but you know what? That's what it's all about. He feels comfortable enough to call the head coach and say, Coach, it's snowing. I just want to make sure I might be a little bit late for weightlifting. Now, he wasn't, thank God. But it's those relationships you have with your players. So, again, build relationships. They will play their ass off for you. And, again, I got that trophy because our kids will play their tails off for me and our defense staff, and, and that's how we want a ton of football games. Okay, so that's program goal number one. Second one is to make sure they're, you know, they're graduating. We have 100% graduation if our guys you know, finish their four years of eligibility. Okay, we've had only four guys in all my years at Pitt, in five years, four guys haven't graduated. Tyler Boyd left early, left a year early, okay? Signed a $43 million contract a year ago with the, the Bengals. Uh, James Conner, tailback with the Steelers, left early. Okay, uh, he's looking to get another contract if he can stay healthy. But a big old tailback beat cancer in Pittsburgh as well as was a heck of a tailback and an all ACC player. Uh, the next one was Jordan Whitehead starting safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Another knucklehead kid named Quadri Henderson uh, who left early. Okay, knucklehead didn't trust the coaches. You know, talk about relationships. You know, sat in my office before we you know beat the number two team in the country, Miami, Ohio, uh, Miami Florida, whatever year it was a couple years ago. And he said, Coach, I'm leaving early for the draft. I mean, I like tower over him. I'm, I'm six foot. This guy's like, comes up to my nose. I'm like, what? Like, I had no clue. And he had a crappy year, too. I'm like, Quadri, what are you doing? He goes, my agent says I'll be a third to fifth rounder. I said, well, you know, your agent's lying to you because he wants to take your money. I said, I can tell you right now. I said, you're going to be a free agent. You're going to get cut. You're going to have no degree. Okay, guess what? All three of those things happened. I saw him in December at bowl game. He comes to practice. And you know, it's the first time in two years I grabbed him, okay, because I never wanted to say after the first, you know, as soon as he got cut, call him up and say, hey, I told you so. I didn't want to do that. So it took two years for me to grab him, and I kind of grabbed my hand, put my hands on his shoulders and said, hey, you know, it's been two years now. 
don't you wish you would have stayed? He goes, coach, I screwed up, you know. But, you know, again, I hope every player, you know, learns from that. Um, and, again, he didn't get his grease. We still can't get him back to school. He just doesn't want to go. He's still fighting that dream of, you know, making it with the NFL. Again, he's a five foot eight, 190-pound little jet sweep guy that, uh, you know, that doesn't run great routes. And he's not just, you know, he may, you know, be a free agent a couple more years, but he better get his degree. He's got nothing going, okay? Um, so we want to make sure our guys get degrees. That's, that's, that's that story. Next one is winning, okay? Again, I took that job, Pitt. I told you to turn down some other jobs, whether we're D coordinators or head jobs, because I want to go somewhere to win. I want to have a chance to win. I was having a blast at Michigan State. Eight years, I didn't need to be a head coach. I just wanted to make sure it was the right move. And that's why I've been patient in what I've done. And, you know, we got there. There was a reason we could win championships there. And, again, that, I, you know, as I go through our goals, it's easy to have relationships because that better be who we are in this room. I hope every one of you guys are coaching the game of football for the right reason, okay, for the right reason. I didn't get into coaching for making, to make money. When I got into coaching, my dad told me not to. He died at age 51 when he was a head coach athletic director at Youngstown State. He was at Miami, Florida, Yale, Brown, uh, Kentucky, Youngstown State, defense coordinator, excuse me, head coach, defense coordinator, athletic director, making $43,000. It's like, I didn't, you know, like you're watching that, six kids, man, we were just, you know, we were lucky to have, you know, you know, a, you know, a sandwich for dinner. I mean, just, you weren't making that much with six kids and mom didn't work, okay? So we didn't get in for that reason, but it's hard to win. Make the right decisions on where you go. Again, I love the University of Pittsburgh because we can be in the championship game every single year. We got Clemson's in the other division, okay? A year, two years, I guess two seasons ago, we're in that championship game. Now, we got beat by, you know, the national champion, you know, Clemson won the national championship that year. Um, but we got to that game. Our kids believe we can be in that game every single year, and that's the kind of team I want to coach. That's the place I want to coach, okay? So, again, that's not easy. It's not easy to win. The last one is being givers, not takers. Um, you know, we, you know it's, it's academics. It's going to class. It's lifting weights. It's going to practice, doing all those things. But, you know, our kids are blessed. They got a lot of different things. They got a lot of resources. They got people who care about them, from academics to the weight room to operations to recruiting staff, coaching staff. They got a ton of people that care about them. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people that, out there that have more need than, than we do. And I want to make sure our kids are giving back to the city of Pittsburgh and, and to the community. And, again, I think the world would be a better place if we learn how to give back uh, uh, to, you know, to, to the places we live in. So um, that's the end of the philosophy, okay? I'm going to talk a little defensive philosophy. Again, you know, fundamentals, guys. It's all about fundamentals, okay? And, again, when you watch our defense and you go home and you YouTube and throw a Throw the Rose Bowl on, okay? You're going to say, man, they look the same all the time. We're going to line up in four down, okay? We're going to be in a two shell playing a lot of quarters coverage. That's what we do. Offenses are going to know where we're going to be, okay? We get schemed and all that. And we know what the four beaters are and, the, you know, how they're going to defend, you know, try to attack a nine technique. We know what they're going to do, okay? Doesn't matter. That's why we're focused on the little things because our kids love our defense because they know what to do. They get to go play fast, OK, and everybody else knows what we're going to do, but we're going to beat them with fundamentals. So uh, so that's the key. And I think when you coach the little things, your coaches believe in that and they can just get better every single day. OK, again, disguise wise, uh, again, just my philosophy. I want everything to look the same. I want that two shell. And all of a sudden we're going to move now and we're going to zone blitz. Uh, I'm not going to talk about zone blitzes today, but, you know, we developed some blo zone blitzes, you know, back in the 90s with uh, John Gutekunst was our secondary coach uh, together. You know, I'll never take credit. Because uh, it wasn't all me together. It was John Gutekunst and myself, who was old head coach at Minnesota. He was Lou Holtz's defense coordinator at Minnesota, took over when Lou left to go to Notre Dame. Uh, but, you know, tremendous coach. But we did some three deep two unders. Anybody heard of three deep two under? Anybody ever heard of those things? Okay. So we pretty much developed that stuff when we were at Rhode Island. I mean, that, that was, you know, that's not existing now. But everything looks the same as far as, you know, pre snap. And then we're going to move up front. We're going to blitz linebackers. You know, we're going to, you know, show quarters. We may get a little, you know, man free and all that. But our base coverage. You're probably going to see us in some type of quarters, probably 60, 70 percent of the game. Okay, stopping the run, number one key. Okay, and again, I think everybody talks about you know they want to stop the run, uh, but through all our years, I've never lost a game when we stopped the run. Okay, matter of fact, Ben Roethlisberger, the year before I took the job there, we beat him like I don't even know what the score was, 45 to 42 or something like that. He threw for like the more yards than he's ever thrown in a game. I'm coaching in Northern Illinois. He's he throws for 525 some yards. He had the ball for 45 minutes and 15 seconds. They rushed for 32 yards, and we won. Okay, if they can't run the ball and they're one dimensional, and they got to throw. We'll win, and we beat them that day. Even though they had the ball all day, and Ben just killed us. We beat Baylor in the, in the Cotton Bowl in 2014. I think they rushed for 18 yards. 
they ran bubble goat. They threw it to a fat, we called it the fat pop, you know, uh, it was a tackle. The guy was like, I think he was 325 pounds. We knew they were going to throw it to him. Usually the second play comes in, but they're tempo, tempo. I'm trying to scream. You know, we couldn't stop throwing the ball, but they had 18 yards. And when they got down to the end of the game and they tried to run the clock out, boom, 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 stopped them, punt it, we score, game's over, win the Cotton Bowl. So stop the run. We like to build a, uh, build a wall up front and make an offense one-dimensional, okay? Um, and again, we'll get in and show you some of the tape of how we do that. Uh, Recruiting-wise, you know, I talked about some camps, okay? Um, I was talking to coaches up here. Just you guys got different guys than we got. We try to recruit our guys, but we're still trying to recruit guys to fit our scheme. But every year there's a, what we call the evolution of our defense. And I think regardless of what defense you run, maybe you're dabbling, looking at what we're doing, you know. But regardless of what defense you're doing, you're trying to get your 11 best players on the field. We want to have speed on the field. And, again, whether you recruit them or not, when I got to Pitt, you know, five seasons ago, I didn't recruit any of those guys. But I looked at them. I moved them around. We had this safety, Sean Idowu, who was terrible safety. He was like, this freaking guy's never going to play. You know, he started for us for two years as a walk-on, earned a scholarship, outside linebacker. We called our star position in the field two years. I think he's up in Canada right now. It's like, you know, smoke and mirrors. Like, you got to be kidding me. But we just had to get him in the right spot, okay? So, so that's what we talk about uh, as far as that goes. So, again, that's our defense right there. If you watch any video on that's kind of what we look with a tight end. Matter of fact, that's the same picture you drew up, okay? So a nine, a three technique, a shade, five technique, two corners. We are pressed 98, maybe 99% of the time, maybe 100% of the time. We're going to press our corners all day. Okay, and I'm going to talk a lot about the press corners. So it doesn't matter what coverage you're running, what front you're, coming, you know, you're going to talk about. But I think one of the things we do the best is our quarters coverage and pressing our corners. Walked into high school two weeks ago in Ohio, North, Northeast Ohio, and the coach was like, Coach, what do we do? Matter of fact, it was Walsh Jesuit High School, uh, home of Connor Cook, who played for the Raiders for a couple years. I think he's in the XFL. Matter of fact, I saw his, before I came down there, I took a shower, and I saw his picture up on the XFL. You know, kind of his photo came crossing, uh, across the TV. Um, was in his high school, new young coach there, and he's like, Coach, what do we got? Corners. I know you like to press them, but you know, what do you do when you don't have good corners? What you do when you don't have good corners is you press them. If you got good corners, you play them off. Okay? Uh, so I'll, we'll talk about that in a second, what we're talking about there. But that's kind of what we look like, two safeties. You know, that's the, you know, what we call two high uh, shell. Okay? So, again, when I get a new job at Pitt, or right now, when I look at our defense right now, it's like, where are we going to move our guys? How are we going to get the best players and get our speed moving, okay? So uh, the first thing is, those big corners, we'll move them to safeties. You know, the last kid that signed with us, a kid named Rashad Battle from Georgia. He's six foot three. He's two, uh, 190, I'd say. But when we recruit him, I said, I mean, he's athletic enough to play corner. If we screw up and he sucks at corner, we move him to safety, okay? If he can't play safety, okay, you know, as we got there, we'll move the outside linebacker. He's six foot three and he's tough. He's physical. Okay. So we're going to move those big corners to safety. Those big safeties that maybe can't play there. We move them. Like I told you about that Sean Idowu. Those big outside backers move to Mike. Okay. That big Mike moves to defensive end. Okay. Where do the big defensive ends that kind of get too slow go? Where do they go? D tackle, right? Okay. Where's those big D tackles? Well, you know, I don't, I, I hate, okay. I oh, wouldn't get into it. Okay. I hate recruiting a bunch of you know, sloppy D tackling. I'd rather recruit that big defensive end that just gets big. Matter of fact, we got a kid from Miami, uh, Miami, Florida, a kid named Belgraves. That the other day he called me up and says, Coach, I was going back and listened to your press conference on signing day, and you said you didn't know what I was going to grow into. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, what am I going to grow into? I said, hey, I don't know what you're going to grow into. When you come here and eat the food we got in Pittsburgh, you're going to be a big dude. So those big DNs moving to D tackle. Big D tackles, where do they go? Over to the offensive line, Okay. So when you guys are thinking about your recruiting classes, hey, coach, I got this guy. I got this guy. I'm going to send him out to your camp. Okay, okay. now you got these big offensive linemen. If they can't play offensive line, where do they play? Where do they go? Home. That's a good one. They go to the freaking bench over there, okay? That's where they end up on the bench. So, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully recruit these six foot six, six foot seven. I looked at a couple of them on, on videotape as we flew out here today. Um, but those guards inside, some of our best guards have been guys that move – that maybe weren't quite good enough to play defense. You just keep recruiting those D tackles, moving the guard, and you know, try not to. You know, I hate to go into school and says, you know, coach says, hey, coach, I got a great guard for you. My God, like, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> tell me you got a great defense tackle, and if he, you know, ain't good enough because you said you said he's really good, and we get him, and then he's not so good, we'll move him to guard, and hopefully, it'll be a, an All-American there. So that's kind of how we move our guys around. You know, 
I think that's, you know, again, critical, I think, for anything that we do uh, at Pitt. And I think it's getting smart just to utilize. Because, you know, we all got that, you know, those kids that, you know, man, he can't play there. Try moving him somewhere else that fits his, his skill set to help you, you know, deal with the parents. Because the parents are on you. Well, I know how it is. Next big philosophy thing is, is keeping it simple, guys. You know, keep it simple. I tell our guys all the time, our defensive staff, and again, I'm in that defense staff room a ton, um, you know, just don't make them com complicated. And our kids, right now, our kids are playing at a high level, okay? We, lo we lose one guy that was at the Senior Bowl, being the combine, one corner, Dane Jackson. Otherwise, we have every other guy back on defense. We had four guys that could have gone to the NFL and jumped that because of relationships, okay, they came back. If they would have hated the coaches, they were like, Coach, I don't give a shit if I'm a fifth round. I'm out. Okay, but they all came back. That Jalen Twyman, that D tackle I was telling you about was one of them. Um, so that tells you when you got a good culture. But we got the whole defense back, but we want to keep it simple. Our kids want to keep it simple. And I tell you this, you know, if you ever want to find out what your kids like, it's third down and one, you call a timeout, you got them on the sideline. Again, I used to do it all the time. Hey, what do you guys want to run? Coach, they'd say, they'd say G4 or they'd go G Hot Main Magic. That's what they'd say, period. Two calls all the time because they know what to do and they want to just go play. And if they don't have success with it, they're not going to want to run that defense. So we try to keep it simple so there's no thinking they can play fast and be physical, okay? Again, zone blitz versus man blitz, okay? And I'm going to kind of give you some stats on this because I'm a big zone blitz team, okay? Big zone blitz team, uh, don't like man pressures, you know, and again, I, you know, again, for college, you know, NFL is different than college. College is different than high school. Uh, whatever you may be, but we're big into the zone pressure. Um, again, why? Because it's safe and easy. And I always say this, you know, man pressure, you know, how many balls are, are there in a game? How many balls? One ball, right? They can only play with one ball. And I want my guys to have their eyes on the ball. And when we do zone pressure, our guys are having their eyes on the football. And so we got 22 eyes on the ball. When you got man coverage, let's just say it's four detached, okay? You got two, four, six, eight, eight you know, eight eyeballs that are on receivers and not the ball. And bad things can happen when you're in man coverage, in my opinion. So safe and easy with the, the coverage part of it. Uh, you know, I'm going to go back just looking at, you know, 2009. I mean, you look at, you know, what we did, 2009, 900 snaps, you know, 73% base defense, just 26% pressure. But you can kind of see how many snaps of, you know, zone pressure, eight snaps of man pressure. I mean, so maybe you're getting a little bit of that down in the goal line red zone there, but just not doing it. You can see 2010, 31% pressure. Again, seven man pressures. 2011, 317, eight man pressures, okay? You can see 2012, 2000, these are my last three years at Michigan State. You can see 34, 34. So that's about, I'm, you know, I'm somewhere in a 66, you know, percent, 35 percent pressure. So I'm going to mix it up. We're going to play our base, and then there's a change up, and it's all disguise wise going to look the same. But you can see 10, 4, whatever that, I can't see that, 12 man pressures. Okay, then you look really here at uh, Pitt, and again, I have not called one snap at the University of Pittsburgh. Not one snap. I should say maybe, maybe, like, don't do that, maybe. <laughs> you know, might, might use a cuss word every once in a while. Or, no, don't do that. Not now. One of those. But you can see, 16, 9, 6 man pressures, but more zone pressures. Um, and then the last two years, again, 28. So he doesn't blitz as much as I do, so you can see that. So I'm usually in the 33s. He hasn't blitzed quite as much, but 8. And again, this is nine, uh, this 16 man pressures, our GA you know, young GAs, they want to get jobs. Coach, can you get me a job? And he counted man free. You know, we, we blitz five and play, you know, um, man under, but a guy in the middle of the field. I was like, that ain't zero cover. When I say man, I'm talking zero man, okay? Um, so that's probably more of probably nine than 16 there as far as that goes, okay? So that just gives you an idea of what we're doing. Four, three principles. Why do I like the four, three, okay? Um, you know, it's funny. There's a lot of three, four teams out there that play the three, four versus, you know, an I pro set, you know? two backs and a tight end in a box. And then when they get to a spread set, they want to be in a 4-3, okay, for pass rush and all those purposes. So when you watch NFL teams, it's kind of weird. You know, well, how much of the, how much of the you know, two back sets are we seeing? Anybody, who's still seeing uh, two back sets out here? Two back and a tight end. We still got quite a bit of it. And I've got a little bit of tape there. So there's still some of that dinosaur offenses out here, okay? Um, that's good. We still see some of it. We played Boston College last game of the season. That's, you know, about all they did. But I love the 4-3 because it's easy to adjust everything out. Our linebackers and safeties do the adjustment. Our D-line gets to go play, okay? We get nine guys in a box. I hate watching TV on Sundays or Saturday nights and they're talking about, well, they got an eight-man box, okay? That's great. I already told you we want to stop the run, so we want to get nine guys in a box whenever we can, and that's, that's a key there. 
we want to bounce all inside runs, okay? Um, if they want to run the ball inside, we want it to go outside, okay? Simple principles. Everybody talks about spilling or wrong arming, okay? So we're at all times, whatever we're looking at, it might be a new play we're seeing, new formations. You guys know how much junk we see in this game nowadays. Now I've got some of it on video. We want to bounce all runs. I want to make that tailback stop his feet and go sideways and then let our speed chase that football down. That's why we got the speed on the field. All outside runs. I want that tailback running outside and going, can't go, boom. Put his foot in the ground, have to stop. Okay, I want to, I want to make him go where he doesn't want to go. So that's our philosophy defensively. Defensive line, we're an attack front. Our D-line coach does a great job. We may have one of the best fronts in the country next year. I mean, we've got some guys, matter of fact, we led the country in sacks, and two of our best linemen didn't even play. They both had ACLs early in the year. A kid named Rashad Weaver and Keyshawn Camp. Our best DN is Rashad Weaver. He could have left a year ago to the NFL, um, but he's coming back. It's like, it's, I mean, we got a scary front uh, that we've, you know, recruited and developed here the last couple of years. So we're attacking up front. So we're getting off the ball, okay? And again, as an old D-line coach, let me get a sip here. As an old D-line coach, okay, Matter of fact, I'm at the University of Rhode Island. Mike Mallory's our linebacker coach. And, uh, you know, we're running the 4-3. His, you know, Mike Mallory, Bill Mallory, if anybody remembers Bill Mallory, head coach at Indiana, he was kind of a robotic linebacker coach. He's with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great coach. But, you know, like all of us in here, we all have a different style. So he was an old Michigan linebacker, 50 linebacker in Michigan. And so he coached the same principles in the 4-3 defense, which he can't, okay? Um, but as he coached the linebackers, I'm the D-line coach. I had, to, I had to base everything I did as a D-line coach off of what he was doing, okay? So, I mean, it was all like, hey, ball comes my way, tailback comes my way, I'm a B-gap player, okay? And he would, you know, even if my D-end got reached, and he's, I had a five-technique D-end get reached, he'd run right up my D-end into the B-gap. I'm like, well, son of a gun, like, what are you doing? So I had to, like, so what I do? I'm like, I'll just move the D-end way out there. We ain't getting reached now. If he's going to run into B gap, at least I'll be in my gap. Does that make sense? So it all depends on, I mean, we can have all these defenses in the front. So those are the little things that you got to know what he's coaching them to do and what you got to do. So I just widened up my end. So I was never going to get reached. Now that B gap was going to be about this big. You could drive a bus through it, but you're not very physical that way. So our D line is going to attack. And if they get reached, that's fine. Okay. And I would say this, you know, if this is a, you know, if this is a, uh, an offensive guard, my D tackle's right there, or defensive end, I'm, I'm this far away from that guy's face. Do you think there's a chance for him to get reached? You guys think so? Yeah. I mean, so our linebackers lined up five yards off the, off the line of scrimmage. We line heels at five, and the linebackers have a chance to fill and find the hole, okay? And I'm an old linebacker, was taught that way, really by one of the best linebacker coaches in the country, my dad, okay? But our job is to find the hole. And I've got five yards to fix those guys. So our linebackers' jobs are to fix the linebackers. I don't talk. We don't talk, oh, you got the A gap, B gap. Our linebackers are taught like this, okay? Matter of fact, let me click end. Linebackers, read and run, okay? Real simple. Tailback runs that way, go. Quarterbacks under center, we're keying the tailback, okay? Quarterbacks in the gun, we're keying a lineman. Pretty much our middle linebacker key the mic, or excuse me, the center. Our outside backers will key a tackle, okay? If you guys, you know, so how many offensive gurus are we have in here? If you guys start jacking around with your reads, then we'll change our reads too. Okay, we kind of, we know what you guys look at, you know? So, but again, the reason we can do that, coach, and change our reads and know what you're looking at, because we're so simple, we can do that. We're not doing so much that we don't know what you're doing. So, you know, I always say this, we coach defense in the spring, we coach defense in, in August, and then during the season, guys, we're coaching offense. We're going to know what you're, we don't put any new defenses in during the season. Our defenses are in. All we do is coach what you're doing. We know what the offenses are doing. We know stances. We know, you know, splits by receivers, linemen, tailback. How wide are they? How deep are they? Where's the quarterback looking? All that stuff or stuff we're looking. But our linebackers are, are just like tailbacks, okay? Matter of fact, I like if you guys got a big tailback and you're like, hey, praying a Division One guy, might be a linebacker. But all we tell our linebackers to do is, is, Read your keys and run and find the, the nearest hole, okay? That's all you have to do. It's, it's pretty simple. And you watch our guys play fast. We just fix each other all day and, and, and stop the run. Our safeties, key, play, run, to pass, okay? When our safeties, number two receivers, are in the box, we're keying that guy. And we're run fitters. Anytime it's a detached number two receiver, our safeties are keying that guy. They're playing pass, okay? They're out of the box. And, again, I'll simply show you some of those as we go. Our corners are playing press. And again, playing with great technique. And again, details out there, okay? Um, so, why I like quarters coverage, okay? 
Okay, let me ask you this. Cover three. Who knows what cover three is? Everybody knows what cover three is. Okay, so tell me what cover three is. What do the, what do the three back guys do? Okay, they got a third, right? Okay, so quarters coverage, guys, is very similar to thirds. They each got a what? Quarter. So now we split the field in quarters, okay? Again, the reason I like quarters, guys, because if they come out in four verticals, four, four receivers, just like that first picture I kind of showed you, regardless of where they are, if they got two receivers detached either side or tight end, if all four of those guys got vertical, we got guys on top of them. Does that make sense? Okay, if only three of those guys go vertical, we still got a guy on top of the three, maybe the other guy blocks, right? Maybe it's a tight end. Does that make sense? I'm gonna show you some video, okay? If we get four verticals and we're in cover three, it's a little, little dicey, right? Offensive guys love cover three, right? They love that stuff, okay? Four verticals, you got those safeties better be good. So quarters means I got a quarter of the field, okay? And, you know, if the number two receivers block, our safeties attack it. You know, our quarters are pressed. So we're, we're good versus everything, regardless of what you do. And I'll kind of explain that. And I know, is there, is there any questions? So our linebackers, again, just quarters coverage. You know, we let those guys run. Again, love court. Again, this is just why we like cover four. It's great for shotgun, quarterback run stuff, okay? I mean, through the years, we have just destroyed quarterback runs. Even when Urban Meyer was at Bowling Green, if you guys remember some of that. I mean, when he was doing all those, you know, quarterback runs, he kind of started some of that. It's great for quarterback runs. Why is it great for quarterback runs? Anybody know? Anybody have any idea? Okay, so let's go back to our cover three. Anytime you got a guy in the middle of the field, okay, anytime you got a guy in the middle of the field, whether it's cover three or man free, everybody knows what cover three man free is, right? That guy's back there, okay, when you got a guy in the middle of the field and their quarterback can run, okay, you're, you're down one guy, right? They got, it means they got 11 and you got 10. Does that make sense? Unless your middle of field safety can make a play, but he ain't making it for, you know, two-yard gain. He's making it for a 10-yard gain, right? Does that make sense? So I don't want my guy, I don't want a guy in the middle of the field. I'm not gonna be able to stop any spread teams. So if you're struggling to stop a spread team, I don't care what your front is, just try to find a way to get quarters in, okay? Get in the, you know, because now your safeties are down, okay? Your safeties are down helping you stop the run and we'll, we'll hit you some of that, okay? It's a great screen coverage. We never drop our backers, okay? We'll get to the backer question here in a second, but we don't drop our backers for depth, okay? We're sitting low at five yards in the no cover, and trying to, you know, trying to stop all that and sniffing out screens. We're a good screen team, okay? Okay, quarters takes away all the underneath throws. We're pressing number ones. Our backers are playing low, and we're just, we're all over you, and, you know, we give, we're going to give the offense low percentage throws, and I'll explain that to you here in a second, okay? Again, releases and routes are predictable. Has everybody got that? That's a key one, number six, and I'm going to get into more details about that in about one second, okay? Uh, ten reasons for our press coverage. It's attack philosophy. I told you our D-line attacks, right? Our D-line attacks, our linebackers are going to read that key, and they're going. We're building that wall. We're attacking the line of scrimmage. We'll show you some of that run. So we have an attack philosophy. You know, with our front seven, I want our quarters to have the same, okay? Let me ask you this. How many guys go to college camps or send guys to, you know, to camp? Anybody? Anybody send their guys? I'll never forget as a young coach. I'm at Cincinnati. I guess I don't know how young I was. Uh, maybe I was just dumb. But we go to Cincinnati, or excuse me, go to Ohio State's camp. Jim Tressel would always let us go there. And they'd have like 2,000 kids there. And I'd go watch all the DBs, because you know, it starts with the DBs. You better have you know, some dudes there, and then we can just move them down to the D-line, right? Um, and I have, I have a safety I recruited. Lamont Nelms was a safety, and he played D-end at the end of, the, end of, the, uh, end of the, uh, his career at Cincinnati. But we go to Ohio State's camp. Ohio State DB coaches are coaching all this off coverage, you know, backpedaling, all this off, teaching them all this off coverage stuff. As soon as one-on-one start, what do they do? They press. Like, what the shit? We didn't say one damn word about press. Any camp I've ever been to, they coach all this other stuff, and then as soon as they get to, to one-on-ones, they go press. And it's like, that's what they want to do, guys. So if that's what they want to do, okay, let's make them do it. So I love the attack philosophy. It forces bubbled releases by the receivers, okay? Again, so I'm pressed up on the guy. He's got to go. He's getting rerouted at the line of scrimmage. Make sense? Okay, so number two. Everybody good there? Number three, gives away route tendencies. Already talked about the predictability of routes. I'm going to explain to you in a second. I'm going to give you more of that. But it gives away. We know what you're going to run based on what you do by your release. Okay? Forces routes to take more time. Timing is everything. You often know, talk about timing routes. Okay? When we play off, those guys get to go run doo -doo, and throw the ball on time. When you're pressed, it's not the same. It makes it hard on the offense. They may still be open. I know DB coaches get scared of pressing. 
And, they're like, and then the guy beats him by two yards. But you, if you win at the line of scrimmage and he beats you by a yard, it's okay. The ball still can't be completed because it took more time. They don't know what they're doing, okay? Takes away the underneath throws. Love it because it takes away, it gives offense low percentage throws. Okay, what, what's, that, what's, what's a 50-50 ball? Does anybody know what the 50-50 ball is? Fades, right? They say, everybody, those offensive guys, you, you call it a 50-50 ball, don't you? All the time. All the time, 50-50 ball. 50-50 ball, okay, right there. Low percentage. I'm going to show you some low percentage things in a minute, okay? Number six, it keeps the receivers off our safeties. Back in the day where we did see some more I-Pro, you know, two back, two tight end stuff, it was even better. We beat Notre Dame on last second, you know, um, in Spartan Stadium, last second fake field goal against Notre Dame. Brian Kelly, you know, he was pissed. Okay, but we beat Dave Antonio has a heart attack after the game. Now, Dave Antonio is a DB guy. Okay, and he never when he was at Ohio State uh, with Trestle, he, he played cover three. He's a cover three guy. We got together at Cincinnati and, you know, over and under, we couldn't even agree on where the three technique supposed to go. I mean, in over defense, we make a right or left call to tell the three technique where to go. Right. When he came to Cincinnati, they set and if you're an under front, he was a, you know, what they call bench six team bench cover three. They set their shade. I'm like, what? And I'm saying it's a right call. He's like, no, it's a left call. I'm like, what are you talking about? I finally find out that we, we don't even agree on where the front gets called. You know, I set the three, they set the shade. So um, I don't know where the <laughs> going with that whole story. Totally, <laughs> totally forgot. But, uh, oh, so, so Wisconsin, so he's, he's in the hospital, okay? I got my cell phone laying in the press box. I've been in the press box for at least three quarters. I go down the field a lot of times, but I got up there and First of all, to beat Wisconsin, you had to press your corners and you got to get the safeties. And we have our safeties lined up at six yards. I mean, we got our safeties getting TFLs. But if he was in the office that week, there's no way. He always was trying to get the safeties to back. Hey, coach, they're too close. They're too close. I'm like, coach, we got to get them closer. I mean, if those guys are going to, I mean, people will get their X and their Z. And the closer they move them to the, to the football, we do, we, we do what we call crank our safeties. And we crank our safeties closer. The closer the receiver gets, the closer we get to the line of scrimmage. I mean, and then the crack replace happens so much faster. So he's in the hospital, and we're like, okay, we're going to kick. And we kicked out of him. We, it may, we may have got beat if he was not in the hospital. So um, <laughs> we were happy he was in the hospital for that game because we needed those guys uh, pressed up. Number seven, force the throws to secondary receivers, okay? We press those guys. They got to throw it to other guys. Nobody, offenses hate. How many, you like press or you like off? Our coach plays it. I hate it. Press is terrible. Press is terrible. There you go. That's all you want to hear right there, guys. Just go talk to him after when we leave here today. Okay, number eight, receivers hate it. Okay, receivers hate it. It gets into their mind. You know, it, again, there's a reason. If he says, you know, offenses hate it, it's because it gets in receivers' mind and they hate it. Um, you know, number nine, it's easier to coach than off technique. Okay, it's easier. Okay, it ain't harder. It's easier. So I like easy. I'm always going to take the easy way if, it, if, if there is a coaching. Question? Hey, coach, um, how, do you, how do you teach your corners how to? Good question. I'm going to get you up here in a little bit. We're going to, we're going to have some coverage here. But, you know, how, you know, how do you teach them to press and get their hands back? Well, the receiver will tell you, first of all, okay? So, again, let's, I'm going to answer it real quick here. Boom. Let's just say guy outside release. I'm going to run with that guy. I'm going to knock him. I'm going to squeeze him to the side. I'll hopefully squeeze him out of bounds. But, you know, he ain't going to sit there and at the last second go like this, right? When he starts to go up for the ball and his eyes, he gets, his eyes start to get big, he starts to do this and gets it, you know, then that's when we're going to come up through his hands and get the ball. Does that make sense? Okay, which is never, you know, it's not easy, right? Now, I would say this. If you're looking to get a load of picks by pressing your corners, you don't get a ton of picks. But I've coached, you know, two first-rounders. You know, one guy won the Thorpe. You know, Darquez Denard, uh, Denard won the Thorpe, plays for the Bengals. Terrain Wayne's the starting corner for the um, – for the Vikings, I mean, you don't get a ton of picks, but, you know, they can't complete a pass. So, you know, I'm not worried about the picks and the stats here. So it's easier to coach. Great question. Uh, and, again, number 10, the players love it. That's what they want to do, okay? So when I walk into high school, and I, I'll ask, you know, hey, you want to press you on a playoff? A kid goes, hey, I want to press. I'm saying, okay, well, you know, I, here's, your, here's the papers. You can sign the scholarship right now. Let's, get, let's go, okay? Because there's nobody that's going to press as much as we do, okay? Uh, yes, sir. So is this more of a zone man concept? It is a zone man, okay? We're playing a man in a zone, um, but pretty much, you know, great question. If I'm pressing the number one receiver and he runs a hitch, okay, or he runs a shallow drag, I don't have him. Quarters coverage, 
pretty much you got that guy if he goes vertical. And I'll do, I, I will give you this rule. You know, and again, you could probably keep this rule for anybody. Pretty much the safeties, have them if it's seven or eight yards. But, you know, if they go vertical, uh, the number two receiver. If they don't, then they just get to go, you know, play ball. And I'll get that in a second as well. Um, but pretty much I'll never tell a guy, well, he went six yards. Why'd you take him? They, you, know, I, you know, nobody's wrong. Okay, nobody's wrong. If you felt like he was going vertical, good for you. Here's some of our rules, okay? Or first, I'm gonna number of receivers here, just so we're all on the same page as we look at tape, okay? Number one, receivers are out there. That's how we do it. Number two, number three, is everybody good there? So in our quarters coverage, our guys gotta be able to count to three. Motion changes things, so you can see on that motion, you know, number one receiver here, okay? When he goes over there, now he's the new three. He's the new, you know, he was the two, now he's the new one. Okay, is everybody clear on that? That makes sense to everybody just as we talk, okay? Just want to make sure we're clear. Okay, what routes can that, that receiver run right there? Okay, versus an off coverage. Someone give me, give, bark them out. All of, them. all of them, right? They can run any routes, right? Can run a slant, hitch, whatever. Boom, 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 boom. He got them all, okay? Is everybody good? He got them all. Okay, what routes can that guy run? Okay, so against press corners, you got to fade what else? Come back, okay? Come back. Those are really two routes they can run. Two routes. So we talked about the predictability. Two routes he can run. That's the key, okay? Now, let's go inside release, okay? Inside release, what routes can he run? Slant, okay? Right there. What else? What's that? An in. Like a curl dig, something like that, yes. And then the third one? Post, right? Off that dig. He can run a post. He can run an inside release post. So, Inside release, three routes. Outside release, two routes. How many is that? Five routes. That's all I got to cover. Okay? That's why I like it. It's easier. Okay? Uh, that's one of the reasons. Again, so, now I'm going to show you this. Again, I've got this since 2007. I've, I've kept track of it every year just to see if it changes. Okay? So, last year, 2019, number one route we saw was a fade. Saw 153 of them. Okay? They tried to throw 33. They completed four. Your 50-50 ball coach. A hitch, 67 of them, okay? They threw eight, they completed four. They fit, there's your 50-50, congratulations. Here's your 50-50, a hitch for a press corner. And when we get a hitch, we bail to the seven route because we think we're going to get a smash seven. Does that make sense? We saw a curl, inside release, okay? Completed five out of 11, okay? Slant, ran 48 of them, threw nine, completed three of them, three out of nine. Okay, this is all versus press corner. Saw 42 posts which is a lot, you know, attempted 10 of them, completed zero. Like, that's crazy, right? Completed zero, and I can't say, so when you look at the top five routes, I mean, post, you know, we saw a corner route, probably an inside release corner, they threw it one time, completed zero. So you can see what your routes are. You know, there's your, you know, your dig, which is like a curl. So fade, inside release, excuse me, fade, outside release. Where's the comeback at? Here's comeback down, comeback's way down here, 12 of them, threw three, completed one. That's crazy. But usually the fade and comeback are the top two. So that's 2019. I'm not going to hit every one of them like that. But here's 2018. Okay? You can see 103 fades, completed four. Slant, post, post corner, hitch, tw you know, through 23. Completed all three of them. Congratulations. That's 100%. That's 100% ball right there. So through the years, you can see the comebacks down there. So, you know, again, we got crack and goes, whatever. You know, completed two out of you know, three throwing. Um, Again, 2017, number one route again, guys, is the fade, curl, slant, hitch, okay? The routes that you have to practice every single day. 2016, 144. Look at how many, 144, 2016, I'm not really happy, okay? I can tell you that, 44 attempted, completed 15. That's the worst you've seen right there, right? Corners stunk that year, okay? And I always say this to the corners, if you stop it, okay, they ain't gonna throw them anymore, okay? And I know you guys all get scared. I hope they don't just keep throwing those things. Scares I, me too, okay? But if you stop them, you pick one of them, they're like, I ain't going that way anymore, okay? So 2015, again, completed five of those. Again, look at that, 2015, first year at Pitt, fade, comeback, hitch, post, post corner again. So it's the same routes, curl, dig, which are about the same, okay? There's your drag route, ran it 11 times through one, completed one, okay? Here's 2013, again, fade, curl, post. You can see what they completed. 2012, again, fade, curl, hitch, post, comeback, okay? Top five. Okay, 2011, fade, curl, post, slant, comeback. Then there's a dig, I'll throw the dig in there, and then an over route, which is like a naked. Okay, just a deep over route. 
Again, 2010 fade, curl, post, hitch, dig. Seriously, why don't they change the routes up, guys? This is, you know, this is stats here, okay? 2008, fade, post, comeback, hitch. Okay, so here is just a fade comparison to 50-50 ball, okay? 2019, they completed 12%. 2018, 24% of those fades, okay? The worst, I told you, 2016 right here, I'm pissed. Ronaldo Hill, who coaches the DBs for the, uh, the Broncos right now, 36%. I, when I did this, I made this whole chart after the 2016 season. So I said, I went in there and wrote this up on the board. I went back to 2008 when I started doing this all the way through Michigan State, then Ronaldo Lee for the Broncos, then we're 24, now we're 12, which has been the best we've been since we've been at Pitt, 2019. So again, just keeping those stats on what we do, how we do it. Corner play, okay, corner play. Press the number one receiver, okay, align inside eye. Come on up here, coach. Okay, inside eye. We call it a shadow technique, okay? It's the illusion that it's pressed, okay? Inside release, outside release. We already talked about that run support, okay? So just really quick. Now, you a linebacker or what? <laughs> okay, so you're the wide out on the corner, okay? Go ahead and get in a wide out stance, okay? So where's the ball at? Okay, it's in there, okay? So, go, okay, you go. You, he's a receiver, man. Switch. <laughs> okay, I want to be inside eye on him, okay? Now, two different ways. Now, when you watch our videotape, Okay, you're going to see our corners are more square stance. I hate that. Okay, the DB coaches don't listen to me, though. Okay, so I'm like, okay, just cover you can Do what you want to do. Okay, now why do they, why do they not want to do our stance? Because they watch the NFL, and they're all, like, square. So they watch NFL, and they want to be like those guys. I'm like, okay, just, you know, hopefully you get paid like those guys. Now, I'm going to talk about our shadow stance. Yes, sir? You want stagger feet? I like stagger feet, okay? And I'm going to show you. Well, first of all, let me ask you. Number one route through since 2008, what is it? The fade. Okay, so why stagger? Okay, I like to be inside foot up, outside foot up or back, so my hips are opened up to the fade, which is out there. Does that make sense? Okay, when you're here, our guys will get stuck sometimes and be there. That guy goes on a fade, my hips are locked. Okay, so I like to teach them, and I don't care if it's, I mean, it's just your inch and back. Okay, because I'm already inside eye. If he has to go inside, I still hope I'm going to be able to get an offhand jam on that guy. Okay? So I'm here. I'm inching back, and I want to get my hands on the guy. Go ahead, coach, release. I inch back, boom, here, offhand jam, run with the guy. Very simple. Okay? Now, I said up there on those rules, okay, it's press the number one receiver, align inside eye. Got those down, too. That's easy. Okay? Shadow technique. That's our kick slide in a stagger stance. Some of you guys might run the old pro punt where you kick slide in block one, two, or three. That's pretty much what it is. Illusion that it's pressed, okay? It's an illusion that we're pressed. For years, oh gosh, old head coach at uh, George, uh, Brandon, Greg Brandon. For years, Greg Brandon, you know, we kicked his tail when he's at Bowling Green when I was at Miami, Ohio in 2003. And for years, he'd sit like right in the front row of every one of my deals. I'm like, geez, I'll peak. Uh, you're here again, bro? And after about three years, four years, he goes, I got it. It's the illusion that you're pressed. And I was like, yeah. Okay, so when I say, you know, we're here. I don't ever want to press. And he releases. Okay, and I'm pressing. I'm trying to jam. And he freaking gets me. And it's over. Does that make sense? Like, I, I talked to you about safe and easy with zone pressure. I, I don't want to play man coverage. I already told you I don't like man coverage. I want the illusion I'm pressed. What do you have to do when I press you? Go around you. Go around me. What do you better do first? You're going to shake a little bit? Go show me, show me, show me your shake. See what you got. There you go. Look at you. Okay. While he's shaking, what am I doing? Well, I'm scooting back. Okay. So he's shaking. Okay. I'm like, okay. Now which way you go? Oh, there you go. Okay. Does that make sense? If I just stood there, I'm gonna get you know. Now the other thing is, let's just say he's a Z. He's off the ball. Okay. And now I'm here. Now there's a lot of space there, right? So now we talk about mashing grapes right there. We don't want to get any more depth. We already got our depth. So we call that mashing grapes, okay? So, you know, again, you're just kind of sitting there mashing grapes, waiting for him to go, but we're illusion, we're pressed, okay? Now, we also have what we can do, quick jam, okay? We have fake two-hand, just so he keeps doing that. So if someone's speed releasing you now, okay, we want to see this big joker sh shake, right? I mean, you saw how good he looked shaking. So he speed releases, now, boom, now we're going to shock him. With, so we got to have those, but we never had to use it because no one in all the years we played him, all those years, Nobody did. He did to us. Like, okay, we, we screwed up. We had a bad day of practice. You know, luckily we didn't have any game. But just it went back to the little things that we just got to make sure we coach. So does that make sense? You good? You know how to coach it? Yep. Okay, good. Coach, double slants. You're gonna, you're gonna try and reroute or 
We're going to try to reroute the slant. On the safety drive down on the second slant. On the second slant or the first slant? The center Okay, no, you know, I'll, I'll kind of maybe draw it up, but let's just say, say he's number one, he's number two, and they both run slants, okay? I'm lined up on the number two receiver. Hopefully that backer is in the window of that one. Right. Hopefully that backside safety gets that slant. I'm coming down, and I'm going to freaking, I'm hitting whoever where that ball goes. Okay, because what's, I'm the safety, what do I have? Number two vertical, right? Right, so two disappears. Two disappears. I'm reading that quarterback's eyes. I'm freaking, that, that number one receiver should get killed. The linebacker should take number two and drive number two. They ain't throwing. Usually they run up right through the shoulder, you know, the inside shoulder of the number of the linebacker there. He's he's just a decoy. He's just trying to clear the window out of there. And you're teaching your corner to do. He's he's covering it and hooking and swatting and, and again our sweet. Fight that inside release the whole. Way. Yeah, he's fighting it, offhand jamming it and, and just you know you'll probably see some of them on the tape, but yeah. yeah. And then we expect that safety. I mean, people don't run many slants because they're going to get that safety's got a free shot because he's got nothing else to do. Now, if someone ran slants with vertical, matter of fact, we have seen what we call C slant. C vertical out of two, slant, get them out of the way, and that's a little bit harder. It takes a little time, but that's, again, we just know, you know, that's a, another route you might see, okay? And run support, we'll see some run support on there. Safety play, we align nine by two off number two, okay? If the tight end is in the box, we're nine by two outside. If the tight end or number two receiver is outside, we line up inside him, usually nine by one inside leverage on that guy. We call it stick Q21. Stick your feet. We're not backpedaling. Last year we had a safety number 12, Paris Ford. First rounder. He's going to be a first rounder, okay, in, in a year, okay? He is a killer, trained killer, but he likes to backpedal out of there. So when you watch number 12, like, what's he doing, coach? He's doing what he wants to do, okay? But we're going to continue to get him better. But we want to stick our feet, okay? You'll see our guys. We're not backpedaling on him, too. We can't be afraid of number two. And then we're going quarterback. To the number two receiver, what's he do? And then go to number one. That's our base rule, stick Q21, okay? Trips. Anytime we get trips, we are, our backside safety will work over to, number, you know, to, to the trips guy, okay? Does that make sense to you? So we're cross-keying to number three. That's how we take it. We call it yo, okay? Our, our safety's jobs are to beat the crack, okay? The safeties have to beat the crack block. We go down inside. If the safeties don't trigger, the corners get screwed, Okay, we want the corners to help us in run support, and I'll show you some pictures of that. Again, the safeties are keying the guy that throws picks. Okay, we want to key the quarterback. My two disappears, we are going to the quarterback. Old school quarters, years and years, 20 years ago, used to be two disappears, go find number one. Well, you know, for years we played that. When I was at Rhode Island, we were going to turn on one. Well, the quarterback's looking that way, throwing over that way. It's like, that's stupid. Like, you know, so you just kind of adjust it as you watched it, and you're like, so now, Two disappears, quarterback's looking that way. Let's go that way. Let's hope if we go that way, the quarterback doesn't have time to go back over there. Hopefully he gets sacked by that time, okay? Safety play. Linebackers. Who asked me? Who's my linebacker, coach? Okay, linebackers. Get lined up first, okay? Again, basically, let's talk linebacker alignment, okay? Mike linebacker lines up pretty much on the number three receiver. He's always got, again, I'm just giving you basic, like, in our quarters coverage, our Mike is working off a number three receiver. Remember, our one, two, three. Remember how we count those guys? So Mike has got to be the smartest guy you got. One, two, three. Okay? Our outside, so get near three. So if it's trips, he probably has to move towards trips. Okay? Our outside linebackers, they got to be inside of number two, but they got to be near number two. They got to count to two. Okay? Those are the people they're working off of. Okay? Um, the three match. Okay? Our Mike linebacker is what we call a three match. Three can do two things. Okay, three can go out, okay, or three can go vertical. Okay, so if three goes out, let's just say three's in the back. Let's just say it's a two-by-two two set, number three's in the backfield, right? One, two, three's in the backfield, stand next to the quarterback. Three goes out. Our Mike will yell, out, out, out. He looks for something coming in. So we're matching those guys. If something comes shallow, that's his. We want to knock the shit We're not playing. We're not dropping. We're matching. We're staying low. Okay, two go, or excuse me, three goes out. Nothing shallow, now we start to get depth, okay, and look for three coming deep, okay, but we're going to be working in that direction. If three receivers go that way, we start to push that way, look for the three coming uh, deep. Does that make sense? If three goes vertical, let's just say three, we call it T-shoot, okay, our offense calls it pipe. Three goes vertical, okay, and number one, let's just say three goes vertical, and so does number one and two on both sides. Okay, what would you say? So all five? All five go vertical. What's the best coverage to be in? Fifths. <laughs> I tell our DBs, like, fifths. 
we, we ain't got this. Let's put another DB in if we know they're going to do that. Like quarters is great for four verticals. Like our Mike linebackers are scared to death when they got a good tailback back there that can freaking run. Like we, Miles Sanders at Penn State, man, he got us on a T-shoot one time. He can go now. You know, uh, linebackers get scared. We'd like to be in some type of blitz coverage, okay, like cover three blitz, okay? Usually people, when they run T-shoot, they run a seven route just to get those safeties away, okay? But um, you would want to be in fifths, exactly. So you guys got my, you know, you guys know what quarter is now. Fifths would be great, but... I asked you that question so you know why. We got nobody. There ain't no safety going to take that because we don't have enough safeties back here. We only got two. So Mike's know they got the T-shoot. They if tailback goes vertical. He's got him. So t you can see he can go out or he can go vertical. They're on that guy. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what the Mike's got to do. Our two-match player. That's our outside backers. Okay. He can do three things. He can go out. If he goes out, you ask the question, what's he do? If two goes out, we know the safety doesn't have him, right? The backer has him. If he goes out and up, he's got him, okay? That's what he does. If he goes in, our backer will yell in, 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 okay? Pass it to the mic. What's he looking for? Three coming back, okay? Where's, he, where's three coming back? He's either coming shallow or deep. Nothing shallow, then all of a sudden he'll start to get depth. Again, we want to escort that guy in there. So if two would go in there, I'm escorting him in, and I'm looking. Nothing shallow, then I start to get my depth. Does that make sense? So two goes in. Two goes out, two goes vertical, okay? Two going vertical, I want to reroute number two, okay? I always tell our backers, hey, do the safeties help you in the run game? They're like, yeah, coach. You know, our safeties are involved in the run game. Guess what? Your job is to help them in the pass game. If you don't touch that guy, we got problems. Your job is to get reroutes on the number two, okay? So their job is to reroute number two, and then they're looking out there to see if number one's there. Okay, so I reroute number two. If one is out there hanging like on a hitch, I go get him. He's my guy. If I look and I say, God, there's nothing out there, I will reroute, try to open up, and try to cover up the bender. And now get depth and look like kind of cover two. Does that make sense? That's all drop back, pass. That's what our linebackers do. Now, the one thing I forgot to tell you, okay, now there's these offenses running all these RPOs, right? Right? We, everybody see who's seeing RPOs now, okay? Now, RPOs changed the whole world for us, okay? But we got that down too, okay? If, if we, our safety see bubbles now, we drive bubbles. And I'll show you some video of that. If, our, if, if they run a quick out, we call it a jet route, five yard, our safeties drive that because people are RPOing us, okay? And we got our change ups for that, but to play our base quarters, we still like it because it's man coverage. That's what you want to be in. If you're in cover three, you're really screwed, okay? So those RPOs change things a little bit for what we do, but we just got to coach our guys. No, we're facing an RPO team. That safety knows, yeah, I got bubbles. I got, I've got, you know, quick outs. I'm going to take those. And we know everybody loves to run the quick out on us. So our safeties are prepared for that all the time. Okay. So that's the coverage there. Um, I'm going to get into some video here. There's not a ton of, you know, watching everything, but I'm trying to really start from a two back set. We got a right call show for the end zone, but again, corner pressed out there, regardless of where we are in the field, three linebackers are right there. Corner safety. Again, that's what we would look like. Okay, these guys are up tight. Again, not just because it's on the goal line, but that's where we'll be. Okay, again, let's just go back to our deal. You see how the linebackers are building the wall? Watch how our linebackers are getting downhill. We're filling holes. Okay, let's watch it from the end zone. Again, there's our, our nine, our three, our one, our five. So linebackers, again, just read, you know, because it's a shotgun, they're keying these guys up front. Okay, keying those guys up front, running downhill. Again, See how this linebacker here spills it? So that's just our base alignment. Again, a little bit wider. Now we got two receivers. Again, both pressed out here. Three linebackers, two safeties. You can see how close these safeties are. Again, it looks like the ball's at the one. I mean, there's four, I mean, there are eight yards, okay? Again, our safeties want to be outside this guy, okay? Again, they got him vertical, got him vertical. If these two guys would arc release and run vertical, the safeties got him, okay? So one, two, three. One, two, three. Has everybody got the count system? Okay, again, just watching the D-line. Again, it should be attacking up front. Again, it's shotgun, so we're keen gun reads. Again, trying to spill it. You can see our safeties are fitting where needed. Again, just fitting a different play. Just giving you an example of it. Coach, can I ask a question? Sure. Can you go back to the wise, please? Yep. So if I took one of those backs, those fullbacks, mm -hmm. get them out to make quote-unquote trips. Okay. The guy comes out. Like this guy here would go out here? Yeah. Yep. What, what determines when you go to yo-yo and when you don't? I'm going to show you some trips in a second, but it's anytime, like, it'd be three. It'd be one, two, three. You know, but even if that tight end, let's just say, 
let's just say that guy went way out here, and then that guy lined up right as a wing. That's three. So that safety right there would move over what we call B and 10, and he would take three vertical. So let's just say this guy, let's just say, you know, this guy moved over and went out there. I mean, that would be his number three. So he's, you know, especially if he's a little wider. If he's in a two-back set, we don't say it's three, it's two backs. He ain't going vertical, okay? But we'll get to some trips. I'm just kind of went from tight, and I'm going to break it down, and I'm not even going to spend much time on that, okay? Again, just getting into a single width set. Again, here's the first thing. Again, I told you outside linebacker, what's he get close to? Number two receiver. One, two. Again, we line up in the apex between the tackle and that receiver, okay? Again, these guys, he's smelling his breath. This guy's got bad breath. I mean, look how close he is. Like, he's impressed, okay? We want to hug the line of scrimmage, and we tell our guys, check with the officials so you're not offsides. We have had cores line up offsides. It's like, you got to be shitting me. It's like, you like, we got a corner lined up offsides. So we have done that, okay? Field corners, air safety. So you can see the three linebackers. Again, we look like this all the time. Okay, tight end there. There's our nine technique. Okay, coming back into the box. Again, look who adjusts. This guy adjusts. That guy adjusts. Okay, if that guy goes vertical, that safety knows he's got it. Get a little bit of outside zone. Here's your outside zone. Now, get a job by that DN. We're talking a little nine technique up earlier, but, you know, he runs up the field. Juan Price, he'd like to do what he'd like to do. What he'd like to do. Okay, he'd like get a sack. Okay, he's trying to get a sack there on a run play. Not good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but again, corners getting up in there, run support, and safeties are coming. Okay, TFL against Oklahoma State. Again, 9-3. Um, again, just watching the linebacker here, okay? Center steps that way. Again, just, you know, look at this. What's he doing? Is he on a stunt or is he just, it looks like we got some type of twist stunt up in here, but it doesn't matter. Our linebacker, we don't teach our linebacker to say, hey, that guy goes in, you go out. No. Because if that guy goes in and the, the ball's going this way, we want that guy going that way. So he's just reading and running and find. Watch how he just finds a hole. Like, that's pretty easy, right? Just go. Okay? Just go. Find a hole. Be reckless. Okay? Okay, we're going to get some spread. Now we got two receivers out there. Get a little motion. Again, press, press. Two safeties. Okay? Again, shotgun again because that's about all we see. Watch from the end zone. Again, these guys, as soon as that guy... Gets down here and blocks, that guy should be triggered. Come on, go. Because, but this receiver's so wide, so it doesn't really matter, okay? He's down there. You can see he's down there. You know, safety's in on a tackle for whatever, you know, one-yard game, whatever it is. He's, you know, he's down. Again, we have that guy motions over. It's really trips over. You can see how he kind of even yo's over. He's still got cutback over here, though. He's yo to three but has cutback. Okay, another two-back set here. Yes, sir. That's two plays in a row where you're deep. Tackle and slide it in yep. Is there a, a call like This one here, this one here is he's going in, and so is he. We call that a stab. So, you know, I'll give you, you know, when our nine technique does it, we call it a niner. When our five technique does it, what do we call it? Fiver. Okay. When our when when our nine and three go, we call it stab. When our five and one do it, we call it a blade. So we do that quite a bit. Again, it doesn't, again, the great thing is we tell our linebackers, like, there's some linebacker coaches who say, oh, you know, Romero told you the robotic, like, hey, I am a B-gap player. And if I call a fiver, that guy may still run. Who knows where he goes? We've seen people run fivers, and backers will say, I'm a C-gap player. He runs a C-gap. Well, the ball's going that way. You know, the C-gap doesn't matter. You'll find the hole. So guys get naturally reached. Fivers, niners, the guys get reached. So don't worry. We don't coach those guys. I say, ignore those calls. Fibers, niners, stabs, blades don't matter, okay? Uh, but we're going to move those guys. Like I said, we're going to look the same. And I think a big mistake guys make, like when, let's just say you're tight end, and I'm, I'm going to run a niner like you're seeing right there. A lot of mistakes coaches make is, what, what's the, if I'm going to run a niner, what, does he, what, what should the guy do? Cheat, right? Oh, I got to cheat to get there, right? Well, the offensive guys aren't dumbasses, right? They're looking tape. When you cheat, they know it's coming, right? Here's the other thing. If the tight end is there, Okay, if I call a nine, let's just talk front stunts for a second here. If, the, if he base blocks me or reaches me, I'm in the C gap, which is for a nine, right? If he goes down, I don't, am I going to get across his face? No. So I just come off his. I tell our guys on niners in that movement, line up wider. What's that do? If that guy's going to base or reach, he comes wider for you, right? What's that, what happens to that hole in there? It's big. They love that. But it's like people, like, it's like they, you know, and again, if I take a freshman, the first thing he does, I say, hey, you're running a niner. What's he do? He tightens down so I can get inside. No. 
loosen up more. It messes with alignment. It's just, that's the little thing disguises. So it's a great question. That's what we do. And everything we do is like, what's best for me? And again, kids want to like tighten down to do it. And, uh, you know, a lot of D-line coaches in the country think that's what you should do. But we do the opposite. We loosen up so, because we're still coming off. We don't have to cheat to get in there because we don't have to get in there regardless of what that guy does. He goes down, we come off his tail. Just like that. See it? Right there, there's a niner. We're coming off his tail, and we're spilling the power. All this is is a shotgun, two-back power, right? Spill the power, backer fits. Here comes the safety. Safety's unblocked. Okay? Because you're going to make, if you're, if you're lucky, open field tackles, guys, half of them. Half of them. If you're a good player. Those are hard tackles. Get, you backpedal all of a sudden. It breaks there, and now he can go anywhere he wants. Good luck to you. Okay? It's, it's hard. I want those guys making plays when the holes are this big and we got to go. I mean, this guy, hard to miss a tackle when that guy is where he's supposed to be. You see it? Again, he's got to take that tight end vertical. That guy ain't going vertical, okay? And again, we're going to get some passes. So I'm going to go fast here so we can see some passes too. Again, here's, you know, here's some bubbles and all that stuff. I mean, just read what to go. You know, again, he's got that guy vertical. Two, two goes out, okay? This guy's playing the run. I mean, we're just flying around but we got guys out there just, you know, there's nobody vertical. Watch, corners press, got it, corners press. In, there's your slant right there. He takes a slant in there, just run to the ball, okay? We don't need to watch the end zone of that one. Okay, here's, uh, looks like Duke. Again, backer, get, you know, everybody's fast tempo. You can see we're just getting lined up. This is, again, we haven't got to some detached formation, but backers walked out of the box. That's where he's supposed to be lined up. He should have been there a lot earlier. But, again, one, two, in the apex there. Safety's got him. Safety's a little closer, isn't he? Okay, and I would say this, guys, that's safety, okay? We don't want to backpedal, okay? Who is that guy? Know who that guy is. Watch him, okay? Like you can tell, I can tell you when our safeties get a little tight, they start to get a little deeper. And then when they got confidence, like this guy, I got his all day. They get snug and then things are going good. When you're outside backer, goes to apex to number two. Mm -hmm. Middle backer stand same on top, on top of Great question. Apex backer, he's talking about this guy right here. He splits the distance between here and here, okay? Mike stays the same. The only time our mic, and we always tell, any, the only time the mic moves, and again, we're going to keep our alignments the same. When I was at Rhode Island, we had a guy named Joe Baudelaire, who was our, our linebacker coach, and you know, every time the back was offset, something was like, well, he's supposed to be here, he's supposed to be here, he's supposed to be there. He left after a year. I took over the backers and coordinated defense and went through the entire year. And, you know, I knew all their alignments, but I went through all the cut-ups, and you, you kind of decide, you know, you self-evaluate what you're doing. And the backers were wrong all the time. It's like, well, he's lined up wrong. Well, he's lined up wrong. Our linebackers can't even get lined up. We have simple alignment rules. So that's, again, just another question. Our linebacker lines up and attend to the call. The only time he bumps is when he's got trips. And we always put it on the backer. Back, back, the, the field backer, and we'll see some trips here in a second. He'd say, bump trips, bump trips, or Mike moves to a 30. Okay? If it's trips... Detached, the mic moves to a 50. So the mic lines up in a 10, which is a one technique off the line of scrimmage. He lines up in a 30, which is a three technique off the line of scrimmage. Or he lines up in a 50, which is a five technique off the line of scrimmage. Those are his three linemen. He's got to know those three. Like not 15, well, if the back is over there or back, you know, none of that. Just base alignments. Yes? I got a question. I don't want to get matched up with you. If, if, if two bubbles right there, is the safety going to drive that? Is that yes. Is that going to change that up a little bit? Yes. Yes, and it's all based on this read right here. Let's just watch and see. That backer's reading that guy. If he pass sets, he'll be there. Now, if we're seeing a lot of that that week, and we know what we're seeing, like if it's an RPO team. Be there, be there. Already on the, boat, or he, or the, safety the safety will drive it. All the, I mean, the safety's always driving a bubble, period, regardless of RPO, all the time. Yes. Okay. But if, you know, because it, you, it, if people run bubbles, what are they doing with that? It's a run. It's an RPO, right? Some people run five-yard outs, okay? Sometimes it's an RPO, sometimes it's drop-back pass. So we're not sure which one that is. But RPO or uh, bubble, well, I'm going to show you some in a minute too, okay? So there's, a, you know, there's what we call whip route. Safety's on it. He's got that covered. So, I mean, it's man-to-man -man there, okay? Obviously, it's not man-to-man -man there, okay? These guys are talking here. Again, just watch, watch, just watch the D-line for a second. Again, we're, we're attacking. Again, he's playing high. Back, you know, watch his back come in the box. Again, he's apex. I mean, he's, it looks like he's blitzing. And we're just going to go attack. This is North Carolina, it looks like. That's North Carolina. It looks like the nose, it looks like the nose is going across, but then doesn't. We're just playing ball now. 
This is what we call cover seven. This is our single width coverage. I want to just peek at this. We call it cover seven. We'll call four seven corner travels. Without any corner here, we travel corners. It's no different, okay, than if these two guys were over here. Does that make sense? So this is a single width. We call it single width. There's no width over here. Corners travel. So he's got number one. He's got number two. Our safeties have the same job now. If, you know, let's just say that guy goes vertical and this guy goes vertical. Okay, so let's just say if there's number two receiver, or a receiver there, a receiver there, we're still playing quarters here, okay? Okay, maybe, you know, it's confusing. But again, now we're seeing a little bit of, you know, a little bit of pass here. But again, there, there's an inside release. We call it a fetch route, but fade. There's just no, no difference for that guy in that position or that position. So they're both inside eye on these receivers, okay? The fade, you see they got the cool stance, okay? The cool Okay, but, you know, but his hip is still locked. Look at his hips. His hips are still locked on that fade. But, again, they're good enough players. They like it, a little stutter, squeeze. Again, timing. Like, you know, the receiver just, there's contact there. Just can't get there. He wants to stutter. You know, this guy's running a hitch here. He's wired up. Can't get open. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to keep getting some more passes here. Again, you can see we're now starting to get spread out here. A little motion now. Okay. So, again, Alignments, apex, backer stays in a 10, stays in a box, corner press, corner press, safety, safety. Okay, once that guy goes in motion, now we got our trips, now we're yelling over to that thing, right? So you can see how this guy goes a little wider. Anytime it's trips, okay, so this was not a line trips, but it's now trips. That guy, he's not a run fitter anymore. He does not have to go to the box because we got three receivers. Even though he's yelling, okay, he's between two and three. Mike, Usually doesn't even bounce much because they don't run the ball uh, because, you know, they usually don't throw it out here and we don't really need them out there. This guy, this guy's really never going to go vertical. Does that make sense? So our mic does not have to get as, as wide. These three guys here can take care of these three out here. But, you know, just watching the run. Again, there's, let's watch this defensive end. looks like he's on another stunt right here going inside. What, we call, what do we call that? Fiver. It's a fiver. Fiver is a five technique. Yeah, D.N. sitting here on the quarterback. Okay, let's watch it from the end zone. So, again, back is here now. Three technique. He's a quarterback player. Should stay square. I'd like him to keep his shoulders a little square because uh, that guy's a good runner. This looks like it's Virginia who won the Coastal Division this year. Again, five are in there. Cancel that gap. Step. Fit right there. Okay, here's a crack replace. Here's corner pressed. Guy goes in, crack. Corner's right there making a the play. Okay, I'd like to see this guy get down there. That guy, is three going vertical? Is there any chance of three going vertical? No. So come on. That's the guy. That's what you wanted to play back there. You want to play that off? Okay. Trigger. Trigger. Get your down in. There's nothing. Your three is going vert. He's running a bubble. He doesn't have the bubble. Okay. Again, he's first year starting. He's going to be, he's a killer. Look at him. The guy's really good. So let's just say, let's just say, yeah, here's one, two, there's three. Let's just say three is out here a little wider. Okay. Anytime two and three are close together, we make what we call a Zorro Zorro call. They'll make this, which means those two could switch. You take them as they come. Okay, does that make sense? Is that what you're talking about? So we'll make a Zorro call. If they're far apart, like right now, we're not making a Zorro call. There's no way that guy's going to be the three and that guy's going to switch. But when they start to get cut close together, we'll make a Zorro call. Those guys will alert that, hey, watch, let's watch the switch. Coach, going back to your last play. The last play? Yeah, the last play. End zone? End zone or wide? Uh, let's go wide. Okay. So I was noticing that your outside linebacker, is he driving? Is he driving on that flat bar right now, or you're having the safety drive down on the flat bar? Right there yeah. on the bubble. Yeah, he's driving right now. He's driving. Okay. His job is to go reroute that guy. You know, we got a bubble out here. Again, he's got that. He's got the bubble go. He's driving. We're going to have these three guys, but he's going to be physical, not out of that guy, so we know if he's blocking or not. But, yeah, he's going to go attack that guy. Um, and, again, people don't run many bubbles. Just more spread stuff, split backs. Again, just outside zone. Here's, here's your quarterback, you know, quarterback keeper here. We see all this stuff. And, again, our DN, I would like him to slow down. But you know what? He goes. But, again, watch our backside safeties back there. He's got cut back. You know, let's watch from the end zone. Again, this is, this is a freshman. He's from Rome, Italy. Now, where did we get that? Now, so usually you don't get, you know, keeper here. Tackle, pool. That guy's gone. And I don't remember what our rules. Sometimes we change our rules. But you can see our backer is key in the tackle. Tackle pulls. He starts to go. He sees the ball's canceled there. He sees Habas canceled. He just, 
But even if he's not there, our safety's going to be there, right? Number 12's going to be there. So we got two guys there. So like, the beautiful thing, guys, in our quarters is if safeties fix people, if safeties fix the backers, the backers fix the D-line, and the game of football, especially for defense, is not perfect, is it? And if we said everything was perfect as far as where you fit, you know, we'd have some major problems. I'm going to keep going here, guys, because we can say, here's Clemson in the ACC championship game two years ago. Again, them doing the same thing. Again, there's your same deal. There's your bubble. Okay, we've got plenty of guys out there as well. Watch the defensive end get out there. Safety drives on all bubbles. Safety drives all bubbles. Corner's got one. You know, and then if one starts to block, then he'll come off at you. See, he got off and he's getting, you know, these guys, they never call offensive holding. Look at this stuff. Okay. Um, again, two by one, two back set. Again, which, you know, we're going to hopefully see, you know, just look at the press, press coverage out there, though. I mean, throw it to, you want to throw it to that guy? Let's throw it to this guy. What's that guy doing? He's covered. Okay. Here's a great example of trying to get a reroute on number two. Good. He's got that guy vertical. Again, right there, covered, covered, covered. Okay, what's his safety doing? Where's his number two? His number two's in the backfield, right? He ain't going vertical. So what's he do? Look at the quarterback. Now he ends up getting over almost double that guy. You see it? So again, they end up, you know, again, here's an inside release post. Okay, corner staying on the upfield shoulder. You know, again, you got a chance to make a play there. You get, you get a chance to get a PBU. Okay. On the one against Clemson, if that number two went vertical, the safety wouldn't be driving double, right? Exactly. There's no exactly. If he would go vertical, he's not driving the bubble. Yeah. But the backer would be able. But that would be the backer's new number two. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's go back to this one. So they ran this. If that guy would go vertical, safety would cover it. And now that's now Mike is what's Mike yelling? Out, 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 out. Yeah. So what's he doing? He's got the shallow. He's got the, so he would take that. That guy goes vertical. He's got it. He's got that guy. Out, out, out. That Mike would start to work for width and then look for maybe that number two going vertical and curling up and being the new number three. Does that make sense? Do you say if these pedal down on distance, like third and long, or not maybe? Yeah, third and long, I mean, yeah, we're going to maybe, maybe. But you know, I hate what you, you want to get in victory. Do you like you want to get in victory, don't you? But we're going to be aggressive. Coach, just a little bit off the like, topic, but how, how are you guys, is there any coach points or trigger words that you're using when you're, you're playing that quarterback? With that defensive end, you know, the, the zone read. Yep. Or, or, you, or you hit the, you know, like the Virginia quarterback. Is your end got that quarterback mm -hmm. all the time? He end's got the quarterback, but he's always got someone cover him. Like our D-line coach gets nervous. I'm like, Charlie, you don't have it all by yourself. Just you play the quarterback, play square. Here's the big deal. We want to keep our shoulders square on the cue. What's the quarterback's read supposed to be? Yeah. Give. We want him to give it up in there. We don't get beat. I mean, people don't keep it on us very often because you know what? We're not, if you chase, quarterback's keeping it. What is the read? The read should be, we don't want that guy keeping it. We want him handed off so everybody knows where the ball is going. Okay, does that make sense? So, but the safety, just like that one quarterback keeper we saw where the, back, the backer came and took it on the, the counter when both guys pulled, safety's going to be there to cover him regardless of the formation. We'll always have somebody covering that guy, field or boundary. Um, Again, if you draw something up, we can figure that out. You know, this is, you know, again, this is motion, which, again, watch your safety. That's his number two receiver. He takes his number two receiver. We got that covered. Backer's got that out to the flat. You know, here's a little screen. I mean, it should be good for a screen. You know, backer, you know, this guy's kind of slow adding in, but guys are adding in. I'm going to go to. Okay, now we got two by. Here's another three by. You know, to, you know, motion again. We're just getting wider here. I'm going to go. I'm going to try to get to some pure, you know, almost two by or three by here. You okay, know, see a fade here. Good coverage there. Again, just pressed up. You know, trying to just chuck it up there. Okay, and here's another press corner. He's blocking downfield. I don't know why they're allowed to do that and throw fades, but but great job by the corner there. So would your outside backer pick up that wing? Let's just say he goes across the formation. Yeah, he's the new number two, right? Yep, if he would go to flat, that back would take him. But again, it's run fake, so they're up in there, okay? Again, if that guy would go up there and spill that and all of a sudden that guy would leak out, that guy would end up taking him. He's got to play the run first, and if that guy would just whiff on him and come to flat, that safety be sitting there and jump it. Again, he's probably seeing a wide split, thinking he's going to take a shot out here, okay? But again, 
you know, depending on the down distance and what we know, you can see how tight he is. He's just, you know, probably a little smarter. Maybe they took a shot earlier and he's feeling it. And again, obviously he was right. Okay. But if they would run the ball up in here, they hand the ball off and lead it up in there, you know, you know. But again, we will change up and play cover two, all based on splits. Here's some three by one with a tight end. Okay, so we got tight end, we got tight end there, tight end trips. Again, there's, there's a niner, loosens. Look how big that hole becomes. You know, just outside zone. That's a 250-pound that's a back. That A.J. Dillon, Dillon, that guy's a beast. But look at our safety coming down. What's two do? Is two going vertical? No, two wants to go in and block our backer, crack, replace. That's a, just a crack replace with the backer safety. Pressed out here, pressed out here, got nothing. It's a great hit by that guy right there. Foof. That's crack replace. That's why we want to get those safeties down there, stopping it. Again, again, because of the tape, and again, maybe it's my angle over here. I mean, it's 10 yards. It looks like he's like three yards away. So again, just, you know, back out of the box. He's got that guy, steps in. Fits, you know, matter of fact, this is a little bit of the play you talked earlier, Coach, just an outside zone, right? That's an outside zone. But, again, that guy's trying to crack. He should fit outside of it. Again, that guy's not moving. That three technique is not moving inside. It's just happening by accident, right? So fit it and find it. I, see, that's bad by that Mike linebacker. Like, what hole should he find? He's key in the center right now. And, again, this is trips now. So he's walked out. It's trips, so see how he's in a 30 now? The mic's in a 30. And then bump trips, this guy should be in a 30 as well. Okay? But he's reached. That guy should fit. Watch this guy right here. Like, what are you looking at? Why would you run up the same? Look at See, we have two helmets in the same gap there. That's not good. Like, are you blind? You know? I mean, just go right there. If he runs right through that hole, you see where he's going? You know, he ends up finding him. See it? He ends up finding it, but he took the long way there. Like, you could have got there and got a bigger hit. Could maybe get a fumble. He found it, but, you know, he, he used his cane as he was going up through the hole. Okay. Here's Clemson again, motion to the three buys. Okay. So watch the backers move here. Okay. So he's in an apex into the boundary. Okay. Now he motions to three. You know, they're counting well. He moves over. He keeps going. Now it's bump trip. So he should be in a 30. He's in the apex. He's got that vertical. Again, we're pressed up. These guys threw for 108 yards, okay, and we got beat. Problem is we threw for eight yards on their defense. They had four first-rounders up front. We couldn't get a pass off. We threw, they, we threw for eight. They threw for 108. But, again, here's just a little bit of a, you know, there's a little bit of a switch route. So our guys are going to alert that switch because of how close those guys are, okay? Watch the out, watch the in. But we got, you know, look at number, look at, here's our yo safety working over to number three. Again, See how he takes whoever comes to him right there. That becomes, that's number three. That's one, that's two, that's three. To start off with, that was number, I guess it was number three. Okay, does that make sense? Again, watch, watch quick jam here. Right there. We're, you know, we're good. Okay, here's against the Hurricanes here. Again, th three by one. Again, walked out apex. Uh-oh. That safety. See how he jumps outside? Uh-oh. Okay, stay inside leverage. Gave him a little head fake. He, you know, again, here's the problem. Who's got the hardest coverage back here? Him, him, or him? Why? He's in space. It's off coverage. That's what happens when you play off coverage. And you better be really, really, really good. And I think this kid will end up playing the NFL, but there you go. Now he rolls over, gets back where he needs to be. Okay, again, mash, you know, you can see he's getting back. But look at his hips right there, guys. See it? See his inside hip? See his inside foot's back? But now his hips are locked. Okay? Then he's got now, you know, but again, he ends up getting back. Again, because we're so close already, if you play off and you're, you're off, but he does a good job getting back in phase. He sees the receivers. We talked earlier about, like, when do we know the ball's going to be thrown? Quarterback, you know, the receiver gets big eyes. His arms go up, come up through his arms. Let's see what it looks like th uh, from the end zone here. But again, you know, the receiver turns his head back, corner goes up. Last play, John. Yeah, you Ohio guys. Okay, defensive end here. But watch how the DN fits there. I mean, they're trying to what we call like a bang veer. So he bangs them, that DN right there. Backer still got to fit inside. Okay, 
Again, D-line, you know, just attacking up front. Backers are fitting. Watch the crack replace. Here's why I love press coverage. If this guy was playing off coverage and that guy would go to crack, he'd be 10 yards away from the line of scrimmage. Now, crack happens. Okay, see how the guy's shoulders are turned? Then he replaces now. Instead of nine guys, now they got 10 guys in the box. They just added the corner. It's like, thank you very much. Look at the corner right there. He's now in the backfield trying to get the ball out. So crack replace. This is safety. He should still he, see how slow he is. Look, he loves. He's Mr. Cool, number 12, Paris Ford. You'll be watching him in the league one day. Look how straight his legs are. He loves Ed Reed. Now he should come inside. Don't go out there. We got a guy out there. Go fit inside, Paris. Okay, last play. <laughs> okay, number two vertical. Okay, he's faking the bubble out there. Just an inside run. Okay, there's our safety back there. He's got three vertical. Three's blocking. He's good. Back is triggered. He's got that guy. He's got that guy. All right, before I get fired, guys, appreciate you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. <laughs>